five on my part. <laughs> so do I look away, that way or that way? You can look at me if you want so you don't have the pressure of the camera. Okay. So today on episode four of Kano's Couch, we have a very special guest sitting with me, Kai Sakakibara. Kai Sakakibara. It's all the 77 of Sakakibara. Kai Sakakibara. As you expect, Sakakibara. It is gonna be the 77 machine of Kai Sakakibara. Kai Sakakibara. Sakakibara finding his way to- oh, Sakakibara! Sakakibara is a well earned win. Thank you so much for coming on and giving me some of your time. No worries at all, and thank you for keeping me in mind as a guest for the show. No worries. So I get asked about you at least every week at home and how you're going. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it is an honor to be able to sit down with you and hear it from yourself. Oh, thank you very much, and it's nice having you in Helensburg again as well. So <laughs> thank you so no for worries. coming down. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> how have you been? Um, really good. Obviously, the first uh, year or two after my injury obviously it's really hard yep but um yeah uh as we'll talk about it more uh, i'm really looking forward to this year and what it can bring so um yep. yeah i'm just I'm, I'm excited about what's to happen that's awesome all righty so let's learn a little bit more about you <laughs> how it's all been going on so it's amazing to finally catch up again. I think it's been almost like 14 months since we've seen each other last. Wow. And you actually opened an episode of Kano's World. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't. <sighs> You're going to have to show me again. Hello, guys. My name is Kai Sakakibara, and I'm here to run you through Kano's Diary 008. That was close. That was pretty good. 034. Oh. Zero, three, four? <laughs> yeah, it's good to finally catch up. Yeah. So let's go through the entire story, the journey of how you became the BMX athlete, Kai Sakakibara, that we all know and love. How did you get into BMX? There were so many things throughout my career uh, that got me to where I am today. Yep. Um, I was born on the Gold Coast and spent the four, first four years of my life here and I just loved riding bikes and when I was three they, my dad took me to my first ever BMX track which was Ashmore and I just absolutely loved it. Awesome. Then I moved to Japan for six years and did my first world championships in France and came six. Really? Yeah. How was that? Oh, well, it was just another race for me, really. But yep. um, I think I was pretty good. Yeah. Yep. And also, it was my it was my birthday on the same week, so my granddad and grandma came and uh, surprised me, and that was really cool for me. That was it. I wanted to be the best BMX athlete that ever was, and that's where I made my decision. In 2007, I came back to Australia and won the 11 boys national championships, which was crazy and also really cool. I knew I was fast in Japan, but I had no idea about anywhere else. And to the fact that I was, I was able to come to Australia and take out the win like that was really special to me too. <laughs> what track was that at? At Lake Macquarie. Oh, that was Lake Macquarie. Yeah. That was my first ever Australian titles. And how did you go? I went over the bars in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the quarter final. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Not oh. very good. <laughs> yeah. No, but I went. Yeah, exactly. I tried. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what else was it about BMX? I was just loving everything about the sport of BMX. When I was a teenager, other kids my age got faster and started winning races. So I continued to keep training and so that I can beat them again. I had to race smart 
to make up the difference. So you were just a smart racer so that you could compete with the size of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's the only way I can do it because otherwise I just got left behind. Yep. Yeah. That was me a lot of my life. Oh, really? Always small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we know you have an amazing and supportive family. Um, how much of that do you think played a role in your success as an athlete and like just as a person in general and the person you've grown to become? You said it right there, Jace. I do have an amazing family and they know all knew that I wanted to be the best rider in the world. In Japan, there was a track named Takayama and I would ride there every weekend. I remember going there to ride all day on Saturday and then Sunday. All day. All day. <laughs> All day. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. But that's how you get better, I think. Yeah. yeah. When we came back to Australia, my parents said they would support us 100% if we did two things. Always try our best and keep up with our schoolwork. I, I don't remember ever getting my homework uh, eaten late or anything so right uh, yeah so i think it worked <clears throat> the yeah. threat of having to do your homework <laughs> to do beer <laughs> exactly exactly nice yeah. the th thought of this was amazing now that i look back on it afterwards it made sure that i got the work done at school before we started heading to the bmx track this set us up for high school as well for example when the non bmx riders were stressing out about exams we were okay because time managers management skills. Yep. Managing managing <laughs> That's it. Management. Management. Yep, perfect. For example, when other non BMX riders were stressing out about exams, we were okay because we already had good time managers. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't look at me like that. <laughs> so you had good time management skills because growing up you had to do homework before BMX. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So you Is think? That okay. Yep. Okay. So you think that your parents reinforcing those rules set you up good for your high school and then when you became a full time BMX. Exactly. Athlete. Yeah. Awesome. Because otherwise, if they just said whatever the school, there's no way that I would have been able to do everything at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately at the beginning of 2020, you suffered a major injury with your crash at the Bathurst World Cup. So what were your feelings and emotions about this when you first realized what happened and like the severity of your injuries? Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, it took about four months for me to realize what actually happened. Saya and my parents were talking Olympics and that it was postponed for another year. And I was like, okay, maybe I can make that. <laughs> <laughs> Optimism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, you got to do that one fast. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't until a little bit later on that I began to realize that my right arm and right leg weren't working properly anymore. I couldn't communicate couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. When my parents told me that I'm not going to Tokyo Olympics and probably no Olympics at all, that really shattered me. I bet, that would've <laughs> been a hard, like very confronting for you. Exactly, yeah, because <laughs> it, it's all that I've been training for for yep. the last however many years. And well, I've seen you a lot training. Uh, really? when you're on the Gold Coast when I was down here. Right. And everything was geared towards the Olympic Games. Yeah. In your second home country. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So that was really hard for me too. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't know what to do anymore, really. Yeah. Mm. I remember seeing you maybe at Narang and you seemed emotional and you said to me, you said, I just don't know what to do anymore. Oh, really? And that was kind of confronting for me because right. I didn't have a... I didn't know what to say back to you because I knew how much the Olympics and that meant to you. Yeah. So we did all see throughout your career, you were very focused on going to the Olympics and becoming an Olympic athlete. Was that a goal from a very young age or where, at what point in your life did you realize that dream? For sure. I first saw BMX 
and the 2008 Beijing Olympics and I couldn't not take my eyes off the screen. I couldn't believe that the sport I loved was in the Olympics. Ever since that day, I have been training for the Olympics as a sport and a place I want to be. I don't know. Sorry, no, that was good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're just being too hard on yourself, <laughs> like you were with BMX and <laughs> your training. Okay, true. Always too hard. <laughs> yeah. just, you know, it's all good. Okay. You're doing great. Okay. All right. So is the new goal to compete at the Paralympics? Yeah, for sure. Um, I tried a velodrome about a year ago and it was absolutely great, but I, I, I could not just get over the fact that I could easily crash and hurt myself again. And that wasn't very pleasant. That was scary. And because I was worried about this, I could not put 100% into the sport. Sometime around May last year, I went to a Paralympic come and try day and I tried rowing um, and immediately uh, and immediately saw that the sport was for me. I put in full effort into rowing. I could put full effort into rowing and if things learnt, went wrong, I couldn't crash and no, I would not crash and hurt myself, okay? It meant, ah, uh, so That's okay. okay, just say, I could put full effort into rowing and I wouldn't hurt myself. Okay, I could put full effort into rowing and I would not hurt myself, right. which was amazing. So that gave you some comfort in the sport? Yes, definitely. Yep. I mean, there, there was nothing wrong with uh, velodrome, but there was just that. Still risk? Yeah, yep. which, but, which I didn't real, really feel in rowing. So that's yep. why I went with rowing. Yeah, awesome. So I'm looking at a sport, sorry, I'm looking at a spot to compete in the Para yeah, Paralympic Games. It is so difficult, but, <laughs> but, the, I, I, but I'm living every minute of it, so I wanna see how far I can go. I currently go to Des Moines Rowing Club three times a week. That is awesome. Yeah. And you love it there? I love it there. Obviously, yeah, at the moment, I have not have any bad days, so I, I love it right. so far. Yeah. Yeah. So we do see you are doing a lot of um, rowing now. What are your plans with that? It, it's very early stages, but I'm really, really loving it. And I just want to see how far I can go. Yep. The main difference between rowing and BMX is rowing is generally a team sport. One of the things that are just the same for me is I just want to win. <laughs> what are the, what are the, the for the sport? Uh, I'm gonna try again. Um, one of the things that is the same is I just want to win. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> what, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just whatever sport. So it's just simple as that really. Yeah. And coming from the amount you used to win, it'd be hard to not win, oh, right? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Talking about winning, we see you've been doing some under, underwear modeling. Um, are you enjoying these um, different ventures that aren't to do with sport? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't do BMX anymore, but I have found a lot of things that I can do and find really interesting. So the crash, although it would have been great if it didn't happen, um, opened up a lot of opportunities for me that I would not have explored otherwise. So that was really cool for me too. Oh, I, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how has being in the gym with Jamie helped with your rehab and helped you continue to feel like fulfilled in life? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Jamie has been my strength and conditioning coach for the past seven years. And one of the reasons why I'm still doing the sport, uh, training in the sport, as I am right now. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just do the 
Go from he's amazing? Yep. Yep. He's amazing. And one of the reasons that I did so well because of the work that he did for me and is doing with me as well. Currently. I, yes. It was 10 months after my crash until I was, could start working with him again. I start, had to start from zero. For example, I would, was squirting with no weight at all and not even a bar which is pretty crazy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these quads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, but no, but uh, he, I, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but uh, in the, my first session back, I had actually, I actually had no quads at all. So yeah. yeah, so. I remember seeing the photo of you still in hospital. Yeah. I was talking with your dad earlier and you were very skinny. Yeah, exactly. And then I seen you today <laughs> and your quads are bigger than mine again. <laughs> Look yeah. at these <laughs> They're big. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so high intensity training has completely been shifted to rehabilitation. Right. But we worked well together and I, we started the whole process once again. Like a BMX process, but just with a different goal in exactly, mind. Exactly, yeah. Where am I now? Where do I want to be? And how am I going to get there? Jamie is the actual best. Thank you, thanks to your work, I am squatting 300, no, 300. <laughs> hey, they, they might be big. They're not that big. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. You're gonna be a weightlifter. I know, I know. Okay. Thanks to his work, I am now back squatting 120 kilograms, even with a bad leg. My That's still more than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, my physique has improved and my muscles have come back bit by bit. I am feeling amazing. You were do you think, the... Do you think that's okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. You're being way too hard on yourself. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Okay. <clears throat> but as a BMXer, you were one of the hardest workers I'd ever seen. How do you think this work ethic has helped you in your recovery and getting back to like where you are today since the injury? After my crash, I had absolutely nothing. I couldn't eat, speak, move my right side on my body, etc. There was lots to work on. I started by getting the basics right. For example, sitting up, then moving my legs. I was getting stronger day by day and taking things one step at a time. Building up the smaller girls towards achieving bigger ones. Awesome. Really, it's the same process as when I was training to be, Ah! <laughs> That's okay. Do you want to rest? No. Do you want to get a drink? Or are you good? I think I'm good. Okay. Really? Really, it's the same. To be the best person that I could be. Yeah? Yeah. Did you want it to be personal or BMXer? Oh, yeah. BMXer. But that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. To say BMXer. Yeah. Because I think this question's around BMX. In bit. Oh, my God. It's okay. Be the best BMXer that I could, I could be. Awesome. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> do you want to do it again? Yes. You, you haven't changed from BMX, have you? <laughs> you you're just as hard on yourself. <laughs> really, it's the exact same process as when I was trying to be, be the best BMXer I could ever be. Awesome. Oh. That was perfect. Okay. I think my mindset really helped in making a great recovery because I wanted to keep improving and I never gave up. Do you reckon that's... A, yeah, that was really good. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's mumbled up a bit, but it's... Yeah, but... Okay. That's all right. Okay, cool. I think we're all going to understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so driving again. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I was lucky enough to come in the car today. Oh yeah, you how me, was it? You Ubered me to lunch. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. <laughs> I felt way safer in the car with you. <laughs> Than most people are going cars with. Oh, really? You drove really well. Oh, thank you. I was a 
a bit upset that I got here and you just left me. You weren't even here, you went for a drive, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, but... you were late, so... You're right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so how does it feel to have that freedom and be able to depend on yourself more and learn the skill of driving again? Because like I said, you did really well, but after not doing it for three years, how was that? Yeah, it is pretty cool, but it took a fair while, like you said, before I was allowed to start driving again. It took two months, no, <laughs> you, you're squatting 300 kilos and driving in two months. <laughs> uh, uh, it was two months. Two years. Uh, two years and seven months. Yeah. Two years and seven months. So it actually was a really long time. Um, it took a while to build my confidence, especially because my controls were different to the original cars we had in the house. Right. So I had to keep at it bit by bit until I got my skills back. Simple things like going to the shops had become so much easier thanks to the car, really. Um, it's so good being mobile again. It really is. Awesome. And like you were saying today, you even drive yourself to the gym now. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I've seen you are doing a little bit of motivational speaking also. Is that something you're looking to take further in the future? And how was it to stand up in front of that group of people or the school and tell your story? Yeah, definitely. That's okay. It's, it's only me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <sighs> <laughs> Intermission. <Yeah. laughs> Definitely, it's something that I'd like to do more of in the future. I've really enjoyed the speaking engagements I've done so far. Awesome. I am standing up in front of people, which was definitely scary. But at the same time, once I have finished, I felt a big relief. Like. Ha! <laughs> um, and they all look like they enjoyed it as well. Uh, I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in the mirror. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you guys. Oh, you're right. Uh, it's okay. How's it going? Good. Get in there. As I have been more and become more confident, I have been getting some great feedback which is really good. I'm hoping that everybody gets something out of my talk. Whether that's a big thing that changes their life or a lot of things, it's all okay. My memory is not great, so I need to prepare and read from a script. But at the same time, I'm definitely better this year than I was last year and I'm looking to improve on this again. And that's what matters. Exactly. If everybody... <laughs> <laughs> anybody. So if anybody wants to hear my speech, please let me know. <laughs> Reach out. <laughs> you also made the trip to Tokyo to watch Saya compete in the Olympics and do some stuff with Team Australia. How was it to see Saya fulfill the dream that you guys were both working on for so long. Mm -hmm. The Olympics was crazy for a number of reasons. Firstly, I couldn't believe I made it to Japan in the middle of a COVID pandemic. It was great to support Saya, even if she didn't quite get the results that she wanted. I was so proud of how much she gave and it was amazing that one of us, at least, was able to get there. For me, I was able to participate in the Paralympic torch relay. Not many people can say that I had to have done this. It was a great honor and amazing experience. That's super cool. Did you get to keep an Olympic torch? Oh yeah, I was supposed to get that out. Yeah. You'll have to show me. Okay. We'll bring it out at the end. Okay. All right, stick around to the end. <laughs> the torch is coming. Oh yeah. I want to see it myself. Okay. <laughs> um, 
let's let's all take a break. Yep. Oh. Sorry, I loaded up on you. No, no. This is number 15. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so we've all seen the video of you doing the complete lap of a BMX track again. When did you realize? So good. Yeah? So good. When did you realize it would be possible to do a lap of the track and how did it feel to complete the lap of Sydney Olympic Park? Mm -hmm. It was definitely amazing feeling. I didn't do anything on the bike on the year that I crashed. And, but we knew that I need to go out there and have a go, even if it wasn't very pretty. That a, a lot of people don't know that amount of work that I had put in to get back on the track and finish that lap. First, I rode a free ruler, <laughs> which is pretty cool anyway. Um, and I rode it inside the Sydney Olympic Park and then about a mountain bike and then finally my race bike. I did that for a few more weeks before I was even allowed to start riding the track. Perfect. I did it straight by straight and then the whole track. It took bloody ages, <laughs> <laughs> months in fact, but I did it in the end and it was the best feeling of my life. That's awesome. You were telling me earlier that you haven't gone back. You've never done another lap since then? No. Um, you finished on that one? Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I'm done with BMX and there's something else calling for me at, and at the moment that's rowing, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's good that you can find something else to move forward to. Exactly, yeah. All right, so let's do some quick questions to finish off, yep. give you a break. <laughs> so, so uh, I've got a question. Yep. The, the stuff you've done so far, did anyone take, have notes like this, like Rico and stuff like that? No. Oh, really? For Rico's one, yeah. I didn't even have notes. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> I just rattled off questions. Oh, wow, okay. Yep. This is the professional one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. This one's the real deal. Yeah. First one with the microphones. Oh, first really? One with notes. Wow. That's pretty cool. Trendsetter. Yeah, you exactly. <laughs> no, You're no, no, you no, are. You. <laughs> Number one, what is your proudest moment as an athlete? When I made my first ever World Cup final in Puffendale, Netherlands. And what did you get in that one? Fourth? Nah, fifth, I think. Fifth. Yeah. I've already got fourth. How did you know that? I remember. I used to, <laughs> I used to watch you all. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, number two. What is your proudest moment as a person? I think participating in the Paralympic Torch Relay in Tokyo. That was the proudest moment ever. Number three. How did you always stay so motivated? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's easy. I just wanted to be the best. So I had to keep going until I get there. That's it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Simple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> People are just overthinking it. I know. What is a message you would like to leave to anyone that's trying to become successful in their own sport, whether it's BMX or something else? No matter how hard things get, remember this, one day at a time, one moment at a time. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that was motivating. <laughs> yeah, really? It makes me want to train. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your biggest sacrifice was to get to where you got in BMX? I think it's gonna be not keeping up with my friends from high school because all I wanted to do was BMX and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could change anything about the way that you went through your career, mm. what would that be? Nothing, 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 be <laughs> nothing because if I had done things differently, I probably would have not have made it as far as I did. Okay, uh, once again, um, nothing. I, so That's okay, I, it's all right. Whew, nothing because- You can just go from there if you want. No, I'm gonna get it perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the Kai way. <laughs> did you just laugh? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Because if I had done things differently, I probably would not have made it as far as I did. Awesome. So you're happy with the way your career went? Yes, definitely. Yep. What do you love about BMX? Everything. 
<laughs> Everything. The start, the first jump, the first corner, and the finish. I loved weight racing and I loved training. I enjoyed being a role model. I enjoyed traveling around the world. I loved every part of my BMX life. And that's why I miss it so much now. But you can create that in rowing now. Exactly, and that's why I'm really excited to see how far I can go in rowing. Yeah. Who was your biggest influence or inspiration throughout your career? Robert De Wilde, who he came to Japan when I was still living there and he never stopped smiling. <laughs> like <laughs> you. Then, yeah, exactly. I don't know about that. But... Also, it's why I got the number 77 on my bike as well, because it was his permanent mates number before me. Awesome. Go again. It was his permanent race number before me. Awesome. So you got the 77, now say has got the 77. I know, it's pretty cool. It's that pretty is cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Taking on the legacy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And finally, if you could leave the world with one message, what would it be? Don't give up. <laughs> Ever. Ever, yeah. Because if you're giving up, you never know how far you can go. Thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us a bit about your story. I really appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck with all your future endeavors. And I think we'll all be watching and cheering you on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for lunch today. Oh, thank you. Thanks um, for driving me there and- You drove me there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks for paying. Thank That's okay. You. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> I gotta thank pay for you. your time somehow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Show and tell time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got the Olympic torch out now. Tell us a little bit about it. Only a few people get to carry the Olympic torch and I felt privileged to be included in that group. I discovered some great values behind the Olympic and Paralympic torches. The torches were designed with a cherry blossom motif, a flower close to the hearts of all Japanese people. 30% of the torch is made from recycled aluminium, originally used in temporary housing for people affected by the tsunami disaster in 2011. On the back of the torch, it says courage, strong will, inspiration, and fairness. The whole philosophy of the torch was hope lights our way. Concept behind the torch and the torch relay really resonated me, with me and my journey. I felt very honored to bring the Paralympic torch back home to Australia. That is pretty special, isn't it? That is very special. Something you'll have for life. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Oh. Nailed it. Oh, good work. I don't know about nailing it. That was but, good. Oh. Is that okay? Yep. Oh. Are you doing your hair? No. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Martin's gonna feature. <laughs> <laughs>